It happened about 16 years ago, and we started then, and we started it every first Tuesday of the month. And now we've, we are fortunate that with the revival of business, we've been able to start it from November. So we've had our first father, and now on a regular basis, every month we'll start, and we hope to revive the interest even locally, so many more people, girls and boys, start singing. And this is happening because with Sonia Sesat and the Kota family play, uh, performing with us and also inviting younger people to play with them. <laughs> Two or three girls from Margao and Panjim are also singing along with uh, Sonia. So it has uh, also created larger and wider spread about Fado. And I hope that we can continue this and more and more people coming into Goa and from Goa will, uh, will have the interest in uh, you know, keeping Fado going like all our other music, Western or class Indian or classical or folk. We have to keep it alive. I don't really have a favorite, but the first Fado I'd heard was Arua the Kapilao. I'm interested in Fado because I find that music style very, very um, endearing. And that's why even before I started, and when I, even 45 years ago, <laughs> was interested in listening to a Fado, and I've got a great collection. <laughs> Everybody who came from Portugal knew that I like to hear Fado. So they would bring back for me a CD at a time. But now, of course, at a press of a button, I can hear much more. so nice that when Amalia came to Goa, she performed at Siddhartha Goa. And I had such a good fortune of meeting her and spending time with her. And we've had even others, you know, Cuckoo Rosetta. She also sang at Al Fama. The whole objective at Siddhartha Goa was to keep what Goa has. And we cannot forget history. I felt it is important to play Goan music in Siddharth Dugua, in all the channels, wherever people are in public areas, and somehow revive the interest in Fado. <laughs>